Welcome to the Rove podcast where we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the UAE where we're celebrating young Emiratis that have made a difference and continue to drive the country forward. And today we have with us Omar Almeri who once was an electrical engineer but is now more known as an entrepreneur and the co-founder of Let's Work which is an app launched in 2017 that assists in helping people to gain access to workspaces in the UAE. Omar, good to have you with us and good to finally meet you having been associated with your business since uh, since you started. Of course, great to be here. Thank you so much. Now, you are actually uh, from the UAE, so it's yeah. not only a homegrown business, but this is this is your home turf. Um, at what point did you uh, realized that you wanted to go into the route of entrepreneurship? I think uh, uh, in university, we did a lot of projects. So part of that was just kind of coming up with a idea, executing it, you know, trying to follow the plan as much as possible. And I felt like that was where, you know, you, you gained the most experience. And um, luckily, as soon as I was about to graduate, the opportunity came up through MR's E25 uh, program. What this was was kind of like an incubator platform for us to come up with an idea launch it and you know see it through to how far you can take it um so i jumped ship from the corporate kind of lifestyle i was in uh, dell emc for a bit um working in a lab which was interesting but i think uh this is where i'm uh, much more comfortable and i feel like the last four years i've learned so much just doing this um so i'm really happy with it and again to do it in your country is like the greatest thing as well there's so many opportunities Absolutely. Now, rewind a little bit because entrepreneurship is is a mindset more than just a job title. And in order to set up businesses, you need to have a lot of individuality. You've got to have uh, belief in your own abilities. You have to have creativity and you have to be able to think outside the box. How much of that do you feel is fostered you know, right from the from the home level um, in in the local culture here, and then beyond that, you've already mentioned that the uh, the programs were there through EMAR in this particular yeah. circumstance. You also mentioned the university, so obviously the programs are, are there in in institutions. But of how course. much is it sort of developed within the culture? I think I mean, take a look at like out the window, right? How how far we've come from the the birth of the UAE, let's say, right? Everything was just kind of like, how far can we push it? Um, how can we create something out of nothing? Um, so I think that is kind of embedded into the UAE culture. Um, and I think with the leadership uh, running the, the, the country, you know, everyone is motivated to try to do the best that they can in different sectors. I think entrepreneurship is definitely a uh, very kind of tough, a trait and, and something that not everyone can do. They can try to, um, but it takes a lot of kind of, uh, you know, figuring out who is the best person to work with because um, I think doing it alone is really tough. Um, and then actually the, the hardest part is the motivation. Everyone says, okay, you're going to be your own boss. You're, you, you work your own hours. But I think the most important thing is you have to be self-motivated. Um, I think that comes from a few different factors, you know, just trying to, be the best at what you can do. And on the other end is kind of, you know, figuring out what your purpose is. So why do I do Let's Work? And I think to, to relay it back to Let's Work, so me and my co-founder Hamza, we hated working in the office. Um, we just, we didn't want to. And we saw such an opportunity for the masses of people who are looking for just a normal space to work. Um, and till today, you know, we still answer like customer uh, customer inquiries, and we we message them on the uh, on our um, on our chat feature on the app. That to us is what kind of drives us, and that's the motivation is that we are giving these people a place to work at, um, and it's great. Um, so I think definitely in the UAE, that that whole entrepreneurship is there, and everyone's kind of fostering that culture. Uh, but again, you have to really motivate yourself to to keep doing it every day. So tell me, was there an aha moment for you when you realized, right, this is not just something that we're noticing, there is a business here? Because Let's Work was ahead of the curve in realizing that the dynamic is shifting from offices to free-form working. And the last couple of years, post-pandemic, we've really seen a big shift. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys... In, 
you know, that's like striking oil uh, yeah, in the of sense course, of like, yeah. that's the modern day striking of oil is realizing that people were going to shift to flexible working. But at what point was there this sort of moment where you realized, okay, there's, this is worth us investing our time and efforts into creating a business out of this? Of course. Um, so when we first started, actually, uh, it, it, the concept was born out of the Rove Downtown Hotel. That's where we worked and we were around uh, different entrepreneurs, um, some some already, you know, they still have their business. I remember one restaurant called uh, Kakel Manara. So it, the, I think his name was Ziad. So he was the first, like one of our first members. And these guys called the concept. So just being around these people, beginning concepts and all of us sitting together, you kind of felt like, okay, wait, there is something here. And uh, just asking them, like, would you pay a membership to call, z- call this your office? Um, that was the first, like, aha moment. Let's, let's see if we can build this. Um, pre-pandemic, what happened was, uh, we slowly saw, like, we were catering to the freelancers, the entrepreneurs, the SMEs of the UAE, which is great. I mean, it's a huge portion. Um, but every now and then, we'd get, like, a massive corporate team that say we want to, you know, work outside for a day. Um, and this was mainly from private companies. Um, we actually had a net positive effect after COVID, and that was a really big aha moment when not only was the whole population educated that, you know what, you can work remotely, but the infrastructure was set up for everyone. We had all companies had to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, make sure everyone's still working, whether from home or whatever. What we landed on was a lot of these corporates now are saying, you know what, we don't actually need to go back to the office or we don't need to be in the office 24 seven. So uh, this hybrid model that, you know, we can see the whole world kind of adapting to this is the biggest aha moment. And that's why we want to take Let's Work to other countries too. We definitely see a huge potential um, you have booking.com for hotels, you have Airbnb for homes, you have, let's say, Uber for cars, but no one's actually tapped into that commercial aspect of it, right? The office and life wasn't really kind of something that was integrated really well. So what we want to do is kind of give people an option to find that third place uh, where they can work at. So I su- just picking on that point there, I suppose n- not only are you giving a a solution to people to be able to work flexibly but does this also work as a way for people to utilize their real estate in that way of course yeah so one of the really cool concepts we're trying to you know explore is um, actually you know how can let's say i have a corporation i have a massive office but since i've asked everyone to you know work from a hybrid model three times a week uh, you can work wherever twice maybe just come into the office you essentially have this excess amount of uh, commercial land um, that's just kind of sitting empty. So how do we cater to them? How do we, you know, open up this office? Because there are people who are looking for, maybe every day they're working from the roof, but every now and then they need a a professional atmosphere. How do they get access to that? Um, We've seen models like this work abroad. We want to try to, you know, figure it out here in the UAE, scale it in MENA, and then hopefully take it global as well. So we're here right now in the Rove podcast studios, and this is the birth of your business was at Rove, as you mentioned. Um, So what was the partnership like with with Rove, and how did that help? Because it is a hotel with a a, a focus on the new way of working, you know, a lot of people working in in coffee shops downstairs and and so forth. How How did it work out for you? I mean, uh, Rove have been like a family with us, right? Since uh, since day one, even before we uh, came up with Let's Work, we used to just come and eat here. Um, uh, the office was actually across the street uh, in in downtown, so this was kind of always home for us. Um, but we came with the idea and we pitched it to them, and we said, you know, your um, your daily area where people have their breakfasts is, is not getting the footfall that it needs. How do we you know? create one loyal community around this hotel um, and then to change the mentality where this is not just a place for someone to stay let's build a a community hub and it aligned perfectly with the what the rove were trying to do um, where they were trying to get a rove hotel in every main pocket of the uae Uh, and hopefully i think they're probably scaling really well in the last couple of months we've seen a uh, City Walk launched, and I just came from Rove La Mer, so they're really doing well in you know replicating the concept uh, and adding a bit of a spin. So with us, it just kind of made sense. You know, they have the they have the like living aspect, they have the community aspect where you have a pool and stuff. 
we came in as the work handle um, where they have such great spaces, great coffee, great Wi-Fi, plenty of plugs, even to the point that uh, the us working with them made so much sense that they actually involved uh, Hamza and I into the plans of the, the newer hotels just to say, guys, okay, you understand where people want to work from. How do we situate our daily eating area to make it more work friendly, which you can see clearly in, um, in the city walk uh, uh, location that they just opened beautiful place to work from and it just makes sense it, to them it's constant traffic in and out whether it's let's work whether it's the visitors and guests um so we're really happy about it and i'm sure this uh, this partnership is going to continue going forward now the pandemic was a real kick up the backside for the whole world and moving people into things that we knew were the right way to go whether it would be shopping online um or you know the way that we travel um but the way that we work was was a real big shift. So how did that work out for, for your business? Because there was periods where nobody could move and then there went to periods of uh, everyone being working from home or working uh, in other spaces. How did it work for your business? It was obviously new for everyone. Um, it, right in the beginning, before lockdown, we actually got the most requests we've ever gotten. And I think what happened was a lot of the corporations kind of said, okay, this thing is real. Um, COVID is definitely happening. There's lockdowns happening in other countries. We need to get out of the office and work somewhere else. Um, we can't be all together. So that's why we saw it like a massive pickup all of a sudden. Then lockdown happened and that kind of helped us. So I'm in charge of the tech. That made my whole team relaxed because we were kind of like, okay, finally, we can start focusing on building new things that we've wanted to in the pipeline. A bit of a break from dealing with operational stuff. Um, but then immediately, you know, the team got to work and they said, okay, how do we open this back up? How do we make people feel comfortable uh, working out of the, out of their homes um, once again? So we worked really closely with the Rove again and we said, You're, um, you know, you have excess space in the rooms. Can we turn them into private offices? We saw uh, mothers who wanted to get out of the house to finish their work, um, you know, booking these rooms. We saw uh, consultants who lived in a like a place of with five five of their roommates, you know, trying to get out of the house once every now and then, and still feel safe. That was kind of a step number one in giving them that very kind of you know this is a your space completely private to you at an affordable price, and you can come book it through Let's Work, and that was a huge success. And then what we did was we slowly opened up well, as restrictions eased um, some spaces just to see the kind of pickup. Um, and there was this pent up demand to kind of get out of the house. Um, one really good thing, and I always say this, like, this is the most important thing to do if you're running a business, is we just spoke to our, uh, our customers. We called them, we said, hey, like, what are you looking for? Are you comfortable to go out? Are you not looking to go out? Because at that point, it was kind of the turning point where, you know, we have to really think, is this business gonna take, take shape? If it does, how does it have to be? What does it look like post lockdown? Um, and now, as I said, you know, COVID was, had a net positive effect. A lot of people are working remotely and I don't foresee anyone going fully back to the office um, or fully permanent kind of workplace. Even uh, we were doing some job postings on LinkedIn. One of the biggest things is it's a remote, uh, remote application. I can hire anyone from across the world um, and it doesn't really affect, you know, our day to day operations that much. I think that's a really good point you made there. It's such a simple concept, but I think so many companies don't do this, which is just ask their customers, what is it you want from us? Exactly, you know, yeah. Uh, in order to be able to actually fine tune it. And in a, in a time when things were shifting very quickly, you, I guess you had to, you know, you, yeah, really, you really had to do that. Everyone had their opinion on it. Uh, everyone was kind of like, oh, no, I'm, like, I'm scared to go out. Uh, you know, I, I live with my family. Then you had the other side, like, I just need to get out of the house. I don't care what it is, uh, what's going on outside. Um, so it was like very mixed kind of reviews, but I think we eased it um, and we were very, you know, we worked really closely with the venues we had. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you remember when they first opened up to go to a restaurant, it was like six or seven seats for the restaurant. Um, so we had to work with them and say, okay, if you have six or seven seats, figure out what are the busy times that people are actually coming in. And the ones that aren't, we'll allocate and we'll, you know, make sure that we, we fill up those seats with people that want to work and, you know, give life to the space, bring it back to what it used to be. Um, and we worked, we, we actually further developed the app 
during COVID just to like, uh, you know, mitigate that kind of risk. Um, and then a part of it was developing this whole other feature, which was booking spaces. We had so much requests, so we ended up book, creating kind of like an Airbnb for people to book meeting rooms, podcast studios, private offices, um, because no one has a centralized location anymore. Everyone's just floating around and, you know, trying to find the best space to work from, uh, which we ended up building. And, uh, you know, it's been a great success for us right now. Interesting. So we're in a an interesting time now because we're sort of coming out the other side, at least it looks like we are. And some companies are requesting everybody to come back into work. Others uh, are not. And I think people have become fairly complacent that they don't want to go back to offices now. Um, so there's mixed feelings. I was actually at an event the other day and I, I saw uh, an acquaintance that I hadn't seen in a long time. And I said, oh, I didn't expect to see you at this event. And she whispered to me, she said, our company has a policy that everybody has to be back at work <laughs> 100% of the time. But if we go to an event, then we have to take two days off. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, she's going to all the events, right? Just, to, just because she yeah. doesn't want to have to work in the office the whole time. And she's got used to it. Mm. So, look, you're an expert in this space and you can see the trends, obviously. So... What is the future of, of working? And just before you answer that, I also want to add, I, I've also seen in London, for example, that um, the renovation companies are now renovating apartments to include home offices. Of and this is now big business. Yeah. So, so people are shifting that way. But what's the future of working going to look like? I think, I mean, as you said, right, the, I, it's very clear and there's plenty of research to back this that, you know, not everyone wants to be in the office 100%. Um, and it's case specific to each country. If you go to the US and you like compare like Silicon Valley companies, um, Apple's like a prime example, a lot of the really, you know, like senior, even senior down to like the, like an associate kind of position, they want to live outside of Silicon Valley just because traffic, cost of rent, you know, they'd rather live in like an area close to their families, um, live in a farm if they want to, right? So, it's very clear that, you know, you've you've opened up the doors for people to work remotely. And that is, uh, you know, they felt the productivity. They felt the freedom. They got to reconnect with their families. Um, I hate commute times. I think it's the worst, you know, waste of time. I'll leave earlier just to not be in traffic. I'll leave later to not be in traffic. Um, I think that's not a really good kind of way of living. Um, so I think definitely a lot of people want to kind of have that freedom to choose where they work. And that's definitely going to stay for the, for the long term. I think one thing that everyone's kind of missing with this whole hype of hybrid remote work, and we're obviously we're big kind of advocates of hybrid work is it's still tough for the new people joining a company. I think one thing that everyone needs to get right is company culture. And you can't really, you know, hit it on the, you know, Right on, right in the get go with uh, remote working, um, especially companies like like legal companies, you need to be in the office to really feel like you know you're part of this culture. That's why we say you know don't get rid of your office, but allow people that flexibility to work wherever they want when they when they really want to. If I want to go and live in Sri Lanka for a month and work there, why couldn't I? Um, so I think that that part is definitely here to stay. I think, uh, as you said, infrastructure will need to change. Um, luckily here, we, we have an abundance of space, in, whether it's in homes or in um, hotels or just land. So I think that infrastructure will definitely have to, you know, be thought through before building something new. So new apartment complexes should take into consideration. Um, and definitely European cities, uh, whether France, Barcelona, or even... Um, uh, in London, like you said, I think they're definitely going to go down that renovating route where, you know, this is my home and my office, and I'm happy with that. I certainly noticed at the start of the pandemic a complete difference in the response I was getting because I've always worked from home or flexibly, and the organizations I work with, which are usually TV broadcasters, work in the offices, and I've always found their response time to be painstakingly slow. But when they all went to home working environments, I was suddenly getting responses from everybody and it was moving, you know. Yeah. So I was I was actually like, wow, this is that's proof for me that, yeah. that home working is 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 helpful. Um so you've 
you really uh, benefited a lot from the UAE and its support here. Do, do you feel that you could have done it? done this elsewhere as well or do you think it would be more challenging were there more opportunities that were presented to you here than if you tried doing this somewhere else um i don't know if i could really answer that uh, i haven't i haven't built a business anywhere else right so I, I i can't really answer that but what i can say is you know dubai is a really transient city and uh, part of that comes with you know massive like diversity of people that you meet um and with that comes like so much knowledge sharing that you know we we see people every day that kind of give us like a tip or say hey you can go actually try it over there why don't you bring this to my country i think it's huge you know potential um you heard uh, miguel talking about spain just now he's saying you know spain's a huge market that could you know benefit from this so i think the beauty of dubai is you know you can really perfect a concept here because you have to cater to such a wide variety of people um and then you know dubai and the uae have have such a huge global presence that it's kind of like a badge that you can wear as a business you know i came i built this in the uae i built this in dubai it has that kind of uh, recognition already if you want to you know ex- extend and you know, grow your business elsewhere i think that's kind of uh, like a, there's a beauty to it i think your instagram handle is guy in dubai right and it, it holds some some weight um so i think uh, coming from this country and even Hamza you know he's lived here he's born and raised here um he's been here his whole life i think he could probably say the exact same thing as me is you know we we love this city we've we've seen it change um and becoming you know a part of that change and and you know helping people find places to work even if it's not that significant it, it's still like a big thing like you know people are coming to my app to conduct their day-to-day work which is beautiful um so i can say you know we gave back to the city as well it's incredible and i've very pleased to have seen you in the early days of your business yeah. and to now see uh, that it has grown and it's become a success and is a uh, entrepreneurial success story so uh, well done thank and you. thank you hugely omar for for joining us on the podcast thank you so much thank you and we will have more podcasts and if you would like to contribute your comments please do uh, and follow rove on social media